Hi guys, this is Jordan. And I'm Maya. And today we'll be going into Jose and Kitty's relationship and uh, that entire history. So it should be an interesting one. Alright, a quick trigger warning for this episode. We'll be talking about physical abuse slash domestic violence, suicide and suicidal ideation, and mentioning child sexual abuse. Yeah, so before we really talk about uh, Jose and Kitty, we should probably talk a little bit about Kitty's upbringing and how she viewed her parents' relationship because that definitely played a role into how she viewed her relationship with her husband and her kids. Kitty came from quite a turbulent household, to say the least, right? Her father was abusive to her mother and her brothers, and then he ended up leaving the family for another woman, and that sort of destroyed Kitty's mother. That was to the point where, like, wasn't she, like, bedridden a lot? I'm assuming because of depression, and Kitty sort of had to take on... I don't know if I want to say, like, a motherly role, like, for her mother, but she looked after her mother a lot after that, right? Yeah. And I think her mother sort of relied on Kitty as almost a second parent in an emotional sense. So Kitty never really had a motherly relationship with her mother because her mother relied on her for emotional support yeah i mean wasn't there some like mixed messaging as well because even though the father did have an affair and left the household he would come back like occasionally right so i can imagine like how confusing that probably is for a child yeah and the other thing was that in kitty's community this was in like the 50s i guess 40s and 50s in Kitty's small town community that she grew up in, the divorce was taboo. So when Kitty's father and mother divorced, Kitty's mom was sort of ostracized. And that, I think, also led to her mother's depression. But that definitely led to Kitty viewing divorce as out of the question and something that would destroy your image and your mental health and would ruin your life, essentially. Yeah. I think the only other, like, little bit of information that we have about that time period is how she got her nickname. Like, oh, yeah. Like, her brothers gave it to her, didn't they? Because they would, like, call to her like she was a cat or something and be like, here, kitty, kitty, kitty. Yeah. <laughs> that sounds really weird, but... <laughs> okay. Well, I think that was, like, a childhood thing, right? Yeah. It's- I can see that, you know, but she had two brothers and a sister, so I can imagine, like, little kids doing that. Yeah. Then I guess it's stuck. Do you think, in terms of, like, in college or, like, in high school, could you say that she learned to sort of, like, base her value off of, like, m- like material things and her image because of, like, how she became involved in, like, pageants and things like that. I think there could be a connection with that. Yeah, that would make sense. She, like, became a beauty queen because of how important her public image was to her. Yeah, like, when you look at all the pictures of Kitty from, like, when she was a teenager or, like, young adult... They're all, like, that sort of picture where she's, like, you know, like a, like a dress and, like, with the tiara and things like that. It's very pretty. I don't know what what the word would be to use, but it's about the image. Is there anything else from that time period, like, before college? I don't think so. Okay, so, Jose and Kitty met in college and right away 
it was like an obsessive relationship, right? I mean, it did sort of seem that way. I mean, do we want to talk about that specific section from the Blood Brothers book that goes into this? Yeah, it says, uh, when talking about Jose, when he wasn't hunched over some piece of equipment at the television station, bleary-eyed from staying up too late in Kitty's trailer, he was hovering nearby while she talked to her friends. Silent, with a serious, vacant look on his face, he looked more like Kitty's bodyguard than her lover. When he didn't understand something being said, which was often, the vacant look would slowly turn angry and his face would darken like a field blackened by fire. His brow would furrow and the air filled with tension. He would try to get Kitty away. So, yeah, not exactly a healthy... Start to any relationship. Yeah. So I think, like, now that would be seen as, like, I don't know, some warning signs... To me, at least. Some red flags. I think that that's, like, another, like, part of this story that I feel like if that happened today, at least, like, the friends, like, Kitty's friends at the time would have been like, um, is, is, like, is everything okay here? Yeah. I mean, that being said, I think, well, both her friends and both of their families didn't approve of their relationship. Yeah. I think Kitty's friends and family, it was because of Jose's race. Oh, him being Cuban. Yeah. And then for Jose's family, it was that Kitty was older than him. Right? I th- Wasn't that why? I think that was part of it, but do you also think that it was also partly um, the fact that she came from a broken home? Yeah. Yeah. They were, I guess, madly in love. I don't know. Maybe you'll be able to get the clip from Eric Telzel where he actually talks about his parents' relationship. He's now in Midwest America. He's alone. He doesn't look like everyone else. He doesn't speak like everyone else. So he's derided. Now my mother is a senior and she is just the opposite of my father. She's very popular. She works for the television, for the whole, you know, for the university and the communications department. She's a good-looking woman, and she's outgoing, and she's charismatic. I think that my mother represented to my father everything that he wanted to be in America. My mother was attracted to my father because my father represented this kind of mysterious Latin figure that was also very focused on her. I definitely think that's true. Like, I think that part of what was attractive to Kitty about Jose was that, like, he wasn't who people expected her to be with. Mm Mm-hmm. I mean, it also could have been a thing of, like, Kitty not, like, actively seeking out something that she, like, didn't already know. Because everything she already knew of men basically came from her father and her brothers, right? Yeah. So maybe there could could have been something there. I'm not sure, though. Oh, one thing that they did uh, bond over, seemingly, though, was that they were both super competitive. Like, do you remember the information from, like, Carlos Barol and, like, like, they would go to, like, they would just meet up with Kitty and Jose and, like, they would play, like, a a game after dinner or a board game or something and they would cheat at everything because they were so competitive. Mm Mm-hmm. So after college, Kitty and... Jose continued dating and got married in 1963. And then uh, Kitty became pregnant with Lyle, and Jose gave her an ultimatum to either leave or stay at home and take care of the kid. And Kitty had never wanted children, right? No. But she was, like, so in love and obsessed with Jose that she... Would basically do anything to please him. Yeah. So she stayed at home with the kids and gave up her whatever dreams she had. I mean, I'm assuming Jose sort of made this ultimatum because Kitty had all these dreams of becoming, like, an actress or a hostess where she could make a lot of money and 
she seemed like she wanted to be quite career dri driven and her getting pregnant kind of ruined all of that for her which is not the uh the healthiest way to start off a marriage or being a mother yeah kitty and jose had a physically abusive relationship but kitty would fight back against him i, I remember lyle's testimony i think he was asked like what his earliest memory of their relationship was over the time that you were living in the house i assume you got to see your mother and father interact yes what are your earliest memories of their relationship what do you remember about it my earliest memory is him, be him beating her in the bedroom I was like either five or six. I, I remember her before, but not them interacting. Okay. So you remember him beating her in the bedroom? What, did you see it? Did you hear it? I was walking, he, they fought all the time, uh, or a lot. It seemed like all the time. And, and when they fought, was this them no, discussing they, things or yelling uh, some, at each other? Uh, certainly they would be yelling and screaming, but my mother was, um, you know, she didn't take it like <laughs> her mother. She, she fought back. And uh, so they would have physical fights, and he would be, in that time that I walked by, the door was slightly open, and he was beating her with a belt, and she was clawing him back, and he had scratches on his body, and there was blood. She was half dressed, and they were just they were just brawling in the bedroom. And I was sitting there watching, and I, I couldn't move. And uh, I think I wasn't there too long. I just walked to my bedroom because I went into my bed and just cried and had this nightmare of that over and over for years and years. And uh, them fighting like that was not, not uncommon. Did you see it or did you just hear it usually? I heard it. But like, this is the thing though, like that I'm confused about. It doesn't either, it was a physically abusive relationship, but it doesn't seem to be to the point where it was like, Jose, from the information that we have, because that's what we can go off of, it doesn't seem that, like, Jose would attack her and she was, like, a battered wife who would just be, like, unable to fight back or do anything. She, like, she fought back. <laughs> and, um, I think something else that sort of plays into this, like, going back to where, like, Carlos Baralt Baral talked about, like, the games that Kitty and Jose would play and that they would cheat at. I think there was a time when Brian Anderson was with the two of them and they were playing a game and Jose had cheated and Brian and Jose got into a fight and they were like like proper like wrestling and fighting with each other and like Kitty like went in and broke them up. So she was quite physically strong herself for a woman. Yeah. Yeah, I remember that. Their relationship was volatile to say the least, but it wasn't I don't think it was the sort of relationship where Kitty was some innocent, you know, complete, like, battered wife who couldn't defend herself at all. Yeah. I mean, that being said, Jose was definitely the more dominant and controlling one. The brothers viewed Kitty as being afraid of him, even yeah. if she would fight back. He, he was extremely controlling over her and would, like, shut her up with a hand motion or a look. Yeah. So. I mean, they, they did have an, a, a weird dynamic. I don't think it was, like, stereotypical of, like, the typical, like, abusive household with the battered wife. I don't... It, it wasn't that, I, I don't think. But it was... He, he definitely was in control. It's interesting, too, because I remember in Lyle's testimony about seeing them brawling he says like she didn't take it like her mom maybe like kitty viewing her parents relationship and how her mother was a battered wife caused kitty to try to not be that and yeah 
fight back. I do. That's interesting. That's an interesting statement as well. That makes it sort of seem like, like, do you think that's something that Kitty told Lyle? Probably. It definitely sounds like it. Kitty and Jose's family histories weren't allowed in testimony, but I remember at that that like Jill Lansing tried to get him to say why, why he said she didn't take it like her mom, and he starts to say that she told him something, but then it gets cut off because it was irrelevant apparently. And objected to. I feel like that is important information. Yeah. I think that should have been allowed in. Something that the experts talked about was how, like, battered wives often, if they didn't grow up in an abusive home, they, like, know another world other than being abused. But for battered kids, they don't have that because they've grown up around violence their whole life but it makes me think because if kitty grew up in a physically abusive home and told lyle that that was how it was for her then lyle would not only not have like other experiences of his own but then he would think that that's how it was for everyone because that's how it was for Kitty. Mm Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah, I see what you're saying. I think it is pretty obvious, though, that, like, especially at this time as well, like, Kitty was not really concerned much with being a mother and was solely focused on Jose. Yeah. I mean, she told Diane, her niece, that children drive a wedge between a husband and wife so that's definitely how she viewed her children's role in her marriage i feel like her saying that is sort of like it's sort of like placing her children as obstacles Mm. to what she really wants to focus on also because after lyle was born i think jose was extremely focused on him and not as focused on Kitty because Jose was trying to raise Lyle to be a better version of himself, which we can talk about another time. Yeah. Do you think there's some jealousy that played into that? From Kitty? Mm Mm-hmm. Yes, I, I definitely think so. I think that was a main driver in how she treated Lyle, too. Yeah. I think this also sort of plays into how, like, she would blame the children for things that she would do wrong, just so that, like, Jose would punish them instead. Yeah. Mother of the Year award goes to. (laughs) I I feel like in the typical battering family, like... Usually there's, like, an adjoinder or, like, an, an alliance between the battered wife and the children. Mm. I don't feel like usually the battered wife is throwing the children under the bus in order to, pr- to protect herself. So I do think that is a difference between Kitty and, like, the typical battered wife. Which I, th- I think that's, like, demonstrative of her own narcissism, narcissism as well, actually. Yeah. I don't know. Thinking about how Kitty knew that Jose was sexually abusing the boys and didn't do anything about it, like, is consistent with how she viewed the family system. So, if you guys have seen our video or listened to our episode about the impact of Lyle's sexual abuse, then you'll know that Lyle did tell his cousin Diane at what... Do you remember what age he was, roughly? I think he was eight. Yeah. So Diane went and got Kitty and basically told her what Lyle was telling her and Kitty sort of dismissed her and was like, um, 
I can't remember what she said. She said exactly. She wasn't sure, but she, I think Diane said something like, she made it seem as though she didn't believe me. And I, I knew that she didn't believe me. And then she just grabbed Lyle and took him back upstairs. But to me, I think Kitty did know, but she was sort of pretending not to know because Diane, because it's like, she doesn't want Diane to investigate any further. Hmm. Yeah, I also think it could be that, like, Kitty wasn't sure, and then that solidified it for her that it was true, but she didn't want to ruin her marriage. I mean, it's, again, it's her placing, like, her own interests above the needs of her kids. Yeah. I mean, at this point as well, like, the family was pretty wealthy by this point, right? Or relatively speaking, like, in comparison to when they first got married. Yeah. I mean, when they first got married, they were, like, living in a tiny apartment and, like, pinching pennies, sort of. But I I think at this point, Jose had gotten a well-paying job and they were... They were moving up in social status. Yeah. I think this also plays into the whole um, going back to like Kitty's childhood and not not wanting to get a divorce. She's just so focused on trying not to repeat the mistakes of her mother. I think that mm-hmm. she'll do whatever it takes to like keep her status and her her place in society. I guess. Yeah. So. In 1986, the family moved from the East Coast to California, and around this time, Kitty found out that Jose had been having an eight-year affair with a woman named Louise Maloney, which Kitty's name was Mary Louise, and her mother's maiden name was Maloney. So, yeah, add that to the Jose is a piece of shit. Yeah. (laughs) I will always remember that part of Leslie's closing argument where she's like, can you imagine the (laughs) SOB picks a woman named Louise Maloney? Remember, she's very depressed. She's very upset. She's crying all the time. She's threatening suicide all because of Louise Maloney. This affair. And what a... What a charmer Jose is. I mean, let's just take Kitty's part for a second. I can take her part about some of the terrible things that happened in her life. And if she hadn't had children, I'd probably... And if she had killed him, I'd be happy to defend her. But let's just take a look at this for a minute. Not only does he cheat on her for eight years, but he picks a woman who has her mother's last name and her middle name to cheat with. Mary Louise Menendez. And her mother's name was Maloney. So he picks a Louise Maloney. And what I find truly amazing in Brian Anderson's representation of himself as so intimate and so close to his sister is that she won't even tell her brother, I have an infidelity problem. And can you imagine the SOB picked a woman named Louise, my middle name, Maloney, mama's name doesn't even say that to her brother who she's so close to this is a dangerously secretive person anyways but this sort of sent kitty off the rails and she like became obsessed with this affair as well as extremely depressed she was in therapy with dr cox who testified and he said that this affair was the only thing Kitty talked about in her therapy sessions with him. And she even talked about killing herself to get back at Jose for having cheated on her. Didn't he also say that her killing herself, like, she didn't, like, recognize the impact that that would have on her children? Yeah. Wasn't there also a session with Dr. Cox where Jose attended as well? Or he attended three sessions, I think? He attended a... Yeah. There were three with 
both of them and one with just Jose. And I think Dr. Cox said that like Jose wanted to keep like, didn't want to get a divorce because he needed Kitty to like like run the household, right? Yeah, like be the wife and mm -hmm. not for any emotional connection. Jose also told Carlos like in like 19 like the early 1980s that he wasn't in love with Kitty and that he only wanted her around to be the wife. Yeah. I feel like that in itself shows his lack of like I don't is empathy the right word? Like it's just it's like a business. I think the other didn't other witnesses testify to this as well. Like it was like a business relationship. That's all it was to him. Yeah. Like, Kitty was serving her role as he saw it in their relationship mm -hmm. of housewife. There's so many levels of fucked up. Uh, the only other thing about Jose with, in relation to Dr. Cox, though, is that I think D Dr. Cox was asked, like, I don't, what was he asked? And then he replied, he may have had emotions, but I never saw them. Oh, I think it was uh, Jill Lansing was asking him about whether it seemed that Jose was someone who made decisions based on emotion. And that's what Dr. Cox said. Mm. Which I think also says a lot. Yeah. Anyways, but, yeah, Kitty's obsession with this affair was got to the point that she would like go into his office and go through his things and i think marzi eisenberg who was uh, jose's secretary said that like they had a system in the office where they used like people's initials to mark the business meetings so that kitty wouldn't find out who this woman was <laughs> which is I don't know, it feels unethical to me, but... Mm. Kitty also went to New York, which is where this Louise lived, and stalked her and took pictures of her, and then showed them to Lyle and Eric, right? I know. Did she show them to Jose? Uh, I can't remem remember, to be honest. I know Lyle and Eric knew that she had done that, though. I don't know, she she was just, like, completely consumed with the fact that Jose had had this affair. Which, like, I don't blame her. I mean, eight years. I mean, she didn't really <laughs> deal with it like a normal human being would, in my opinion. Right, like, Lyle reached out to her... So at this point, he was living on the East Coast, and they were on the West Coast. And he reached out to her to get her to leave Jose and come live on the East Coast with him. And she, like, completely rejected that. Dr. Burgess said something about this, though, which was that, that I found interesting. That, like, if she really cared about her sons, and, you know, knowing now that she knew that Eric was being sexually abused by Jose, like, this would have been the perfect out for her. Mm -hmm. If she truly cared about her son's well-being, you know, she could have taken Lyle up on this offer and moved with Eric back to the East Coast. But instead, she completely rejected it and was unwilling to leave Jose. Yeah. I think Kitty's rejection of Lyle's, like, plan to, like, have Kitty, like, move in with him and Eric and leave Jose, I don't... I, I think it's, like, attacking her children, in a way. And... I think that's that sort of links in with when she left the suicide note for Eric to find. I think that's quite like a 
I remember Dr. Tyler speaks about this. I can't remember what she said exactly, but she was like, this is a very, like... She saw it as a very, like, direct, like, act of aggression towards her children. Yeah. Like, what kind of a mother leaves a suicide note on purpose? And she told her... I'm pretty sure she told Dr. Summerfield this. She, she left it on purpose for Eric to find. Yeah. Who does that? Oh, Kitty, of course. Sorry. <laughs> I remember... um on Dr. Tyler's cross-examination. Um, Dr. Tyler was one of the expert therapists who evaluated the family for the defense. And on cross-examination, Pam Dzanich uh, asked her, like, isn't leaving a suicide note for your son to find a cry for help? And Dr. Tyler said yes, but all I could think was, like, it can be a cry for help and also be a direct attack on your children. <laughs> yeah. I mean, but I feel like if it was really a cry for help, wouldn't she have um, gone along with Lyle when Lyle originally asked to, like, get her to leave? Yeah. So I don't really think that holds up very well. So Kitty, during this time, was writing... wrote some letters to... Jose, as well as to her therapist, and those were admitted into evidence. And there was one letter to Jose that Jill Lansing read out most of it in her closing argument. For 24 years, I lived in a dream. I tried so hard to keep my marriage complete, but I didn't know how. I guess I thought giving you free reign to succeed in your career, regardless of how lonely it was at times, was my way of being strong, so that you would never have to worry about us. I thought if I concentrated on the house and our boys, dash, their grades and sports. I think that is important because, as I've indicated before, her idea of being a mother was to make sure they got their schoolwork done and to make sure that they performed in sports. That was her taking care of our boys, that you would never feel fulfilled. I guess I was playing the wrong keys and was deaf to the music. For half of these 24 years, I was both deaf and blind. In August of 1986, I woke up from my dream and both heard and saw what you were and realized the deception was my fault, but it was too late. I think that is so typical of what we've been told about victims is that it's her fault. Her husband has cheated on her for eight years and it's her fault. My fantasy about you and I and our family was my own destruction. I locked myself in a dream that began in my childhood. You were my prince who would take me into our castle and build a moat, moat shielding me from all the hurt I felt as a child. In this last year, I realized there are no princes or castles, only real life. Reality I see as pain. It's not a world I choose to live in. So you see, it's not you or your eight years with Louise or the other women in your life before her. It's none of that, it's only me. The real world for me is love, trust and safety from all the pain of the past. I married a man just like my father in disguise, the very man I tried to run away from. Whenever we had sex, I could feel you fantasizing about Louise. And she goes on. I think it's a very sad letter. And I think she was a very sad lady. But I also think that this explains to you how she could have been the kind of mother that she was. She could not get beyond her own pain. She could not see the needs of her children. And she probably didn't even realize she was supposed to. She'd never had a mother who did it for her. That's the letter where Kitty said that 
she had kids to give Jose what he wanted, essentially. So, and it's more corroboration that she only viewed her kids as for what they could provide to him. Because she only cared about him. Yeah. Even, like, just sort of describing them as, like, her gift to Jose. Like, treating them like they're objects. Yeah. I mean, Kitty was an extremely pained woman that I think is undisputed. But it doesn't excuse her behavior towards her children. Yes. And I would like to repeat as well, because this seems to be like a thing that uh, a lot of people have been speaking about recently. No, Kitty and Jose did not love their children. <laughs> well, because like the Eric talks about the suicide note in the confession tape, right? Yeah. So this is kind of jumping ahead in the timeline a little here, but um, on the twelve eleven confession tape that Dr. Ozeal recorded with the brothers after they'd killed their parents. We'll, we'll get into the details of this, but sort of the theory that was presented on that tape was that the reason the brothers killed their parents was because of the parents' relationship. That Jose was just so terrible to Kitty because of the affairs and how controlling he was over her that he had to die and then kitty also had to die because of how suicidal she was and that killing her was putting her out of her misery and also that she could not have lived without jose and jose had to die so therefore kitty had to die too this just makes no sense. <laughs> like, I don't even understand how, how it could make sense. Like, Jose had to die because he was treating Kitty terribly. But then Kitty had to die because she couldn't live without Jose treating her terribly. Yeah, it, it doesn't really make sense. This, if the theory was true, why couldn't they have just left Kitty alive and then she would have, if she killed herself, then that would be her putting herself out of her misery, like... I mean, the other thing with the tape, like, the theory that's presented on the tape and why it makes no sense is that the things that the brothers were talking about happened three years before they killed their parents. Like, they talk about this whole time period where Eric found Kitty's suicide note and Jose had this eight-year affair and Kitty found out about it and Lyle reached out to her to end the relationship. And all of that is presented as, like, justification for them killing their parents. But that happened three years <laughs> before they actually did it. Mm -hmm. So... It just makes no sense that these things that happened three years before would then lead them to kill their parents in 1989. Like, wouldn't there have been things going on in 1989 that would lead them to kill their parents? Yeah. I, well, I mean, there were things going on in 1989, but they don't speak about it on the tape for very, I think, obvious reasons. Yeah. I think once you realize that the abuse is true, and the sexual abuse is true, the brothers are obviously going to say anything that they have to so that they don't actually have to speak about the sexual abuse. If you've seen the brothers' testimony, what they say is what what happened with Ozil is that Ozil, after Eric had confessed, Ozil was sort of giving them theories and basically saying like, oh, I know you had to kill them because your dad was controlling and domineering and your mother couldn't have lived without him. But Ozil knew the parents, like, decently well. He had had private, a few, quite a few private sessions with the parents 
and he had made his own impressions of the parents. The like the brothers could have said anything on this confession tape, because they're just trying to go along with what Ozil has suggested to them. That's how I see it anyway. And so, like, th therefore, the theory that is on the tape just does not make sense in that regard because there is no mention of what I believe the truth to be is that the cause of the killings or the inciting incident was Eric revealing to Lyle that he had been being sexually abused. Yeah. And there's lots of... Lots more we can go into with the confession tape, but... Um... We'll dedicate, like, an entire episode to it. <laughs> yeah. I think to really understand some of the things that the brothers say on the tape, you have to know more about their relationship with their parents. So, once we go more into that, we'll go into the details of the tape. I know that Eric brings up, like, that he found the suicide note in the tape. Well, Eric talks about how, like, when Kitty was... When Kitty found out about the affair that she just spent, like, the whole time crying and that he could hear her and hear them talking about divorce and just how Kitty just was crying all the time. I don't think Eric truly realized, like, what the relationship dynamic was between his parents. I feel like Lyle probably knew more than er a lot more than Eric yeah. into what their parents' relationship was actually like. Well, actually, one of the things that comes up in the tape is that Lyle talks about how he had had conversations with Jose about Jose and Kitty's relationship. And Lyle says on the tape that Jose told him that basically that Jose didn't want to make any compromises and that he wanted to control the whole show and that he didn't want to be in a relationship if it meant that he had to do things that he didn't want to do. Which I think kind of plays into what happened after this time period with their relationship. Around 1987, there was sort of a shift in Jose and Kitty's relationship, where Jose started to, like, concede to Kitty more, and was, like, nicer to her in public, and sort of doing more things that Kitty wanted to do. How long after you moved to California did they stop talking divorce, at least to the extent you could hear it? About six months. Okay. So after the first six months, you noticed this difference in their relationship? Yes. And would you describe what was different? Uh, my mom was... My mom was very depressed a lot and crying a lot, but she also got a lot more angry uh, than she had done before, and she got a lot more angry at Dad, more vocal toward Dad. And Dad would back down. Um, he wouldn't fight her. Before, he used to just go and hit her, uh, but now he would just back down and not yell back so much. Sometimes he'd go, all right, Kitty, all right, but he wouldn't really uh, be aggressive with her. Was that different than Kitty, which is what he used to do? Well, he he, he did that when he got so angry that he, he was really, really angry with her, but it happened very, very infrequently. In the earlier days, would he just cut her off like that all the time? He would cut her off or he would just yell at her and, uh, I mean, it depended. If, if we were in the house and there were, there were two different types. If we were in the house, he would yell at her and he would get angry at her and he would hit her. If we were outside and she was yelling or saying things that he w did not want her to say to different people, then he would shut her up like that. That's the earlier times. Now we're in California. Now she's yelling at him and he's backing down. He would always do that, though. He would always say Kitty uh, if he, he didn't want her to, to do things. Okay, but I'm talking about now in California, she's yelling at him, and he is backing down, you said. Yes. And that's different. Yes, it's different. And what did you think was the, was, had caused this difference? 
Well, I had suspected that it had to do with the divorce and Louise. Okay. And you, sus you suspected what about the divorce and Louise? Divorce stop had talked. Excuse me, divorce talk had stopped. So yeah. What did you think this meant? I didn't exactly know what it meant because I didn't understand why it would be the relationship would change to the extreme that it did over just this eight-year affair that Dad, I mean, he had, Dad had a serious affair and Mom found out and she said basically from the parts that I could hear through the wall that if, if they divorced, she would, she would, uh, he would not want to get a divorce. But it seemed too drastic a change. Um, I didn't quite understand what it fully meant. Yeah, there is that change in the relationship after Kitty discovers the affair, where, like, even... Weren't there family members that talked about this as well? Maybe Carlos or Terry? Yeah, they were, like, holding hands and... Like, and their own family members were like, uh, what's going on here? This like, there's There's been an obvious change in the relationship for some reason. Yeah. The theory that the lawyers had about this was that Kitty essentially blackmailed Jose into staying in the relationship because she knew about the sexual abuse and so she had threatened with revealing that and in order to keep her quiet Jose would do whatever it took to stay in the relationship and to keep Kitty happy. Because I mean isn't there information as well that like even though he had this eight-year affair with, with this Louise person, wasn't he also, like, seeing other women and, like, hiring, like, escorts and loads... Like, he wasn't... He was having sex with, like, a bunch of people outside of the marriage. So it doesn't make sense that he would stay in the relationship. Yeah, what's keeping him in the marriage? What's making him try to appease her at all? Jose is an extremely rich guy. He's smart, he's intelligent, he's confident, he's a charming guy apparently, he's intimidating, he is controlling, domineering. He's he's an extremely successful guy. He can succeed on his own. He can get women like if he wants to. What is forcing him to stay in this clearly very toxic marriage? Yeah. Where his wife is threatening to kill herself. I think as uh, Leslie Abramson put it, she's got something on him. Big. There was that an incident that Lyle testified about at the airport that happened in December 1988, so less than a year before the killings. We were at the ticket counter buying the tickets and uh, there were not enough seats. Um... Oh no, we had the little dog, Rudy, that's what it was, so we had the dog Rudy, and they wouldn't uh, take Rudy because he hadn't been checked in properly and something about that. In any case, they wouldn't take the dog, something about the. and my dad volunteered at the counter that he would stay behind and we could fly, and he was willing to stay behind with the dog and f take the next flight uh, after he was properly checked. And uh, my mother just flew off the handle in, in front of the lady at the ticker counter and said, oh, so you can meet your girlfriend Louise in the bar? And uh, said, no, no, I'm not that stupid. And just, it was a huge scene. My dad was just standing there with the dog. and said, oh, okay, Kitty, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll all wait, we'll all wait. And uh, we did, we just uh, purchased tickets for the next flight and then we left with the dog. Yeah, did your dad's reaction surprise you? I was, yeah, it, it shocked me. Why? Um, it was just part of a, it was really one of the beginning of a number of incidents where he, she was uh, very uh, openly aggressive with my dad, embarrassing him in front of people. Um, you know, this was just unbelievable in front of the ticket counter. And my dad's reaction was uh, zero, just a mask of, being conciliatory and it was he just it's like he just gave in gave in to my mom and uh was this different than who he'd been earlier in their marriage if that had happened earlier 
I mean, it, I only saw those things happen in the house. But and uh, if, if that had happened in the house, he would have he would have struck her. He <laughs> and what if it would have happened in public earlier? He would have done the same thing. But I don't know. I never. She would never have done that in public to him earlier. Even even when she was. Uh, not really in control of herself. Uh, she wouldn't go out of the house if, unless she was at a state where, you know, they wouldn't be in public together where she was that out of control. It does sort of seem like Kitty had, like, on some level, more, more power in the last years within the family. She pro I think she might have had more say in, like, swaying Jose on certain things. Right, because I think she knew that he... That he was willing to do whatever it took for her to not go tell everyone that he was sexually abusing their son. Yeah. So, like, in the summer of 1989, this was this would have been when Eric was on his, like, uh, tennis tour, right? Yeah. So, um, usually the... When the brothers would go to, like, tennis tournaments if they were in, like, the Michigan area or, like, uh, specifically in the summer of 1989, this would have been, like, Kalamazoo. They would meet up with um, Kitty's brother, Brian Anderson, and his wife at the time, Pat Anderson. And in the summer of 1989, so this would have been just a few moments before the killings, uh, Kitty told Pat Anderson that she wished that she had the courage to divorce Jose. Yeah. I think it would have been weeks before Yeah. the killings, yeah. I mean, I think this gives, like, a good sort of outline of what the relationship was between Jose and Kitty and what each of them wanted out of the marriage and how that extremely negatively impacted their children. Yeah. I also think it, like, shows sort of where the alliances were. Yeah, she was on his side. Right. How Lyle and Eric viewed what their parents wanted in life sort of revolved around how they treated each other, and especially towards the end, because Kitty showed that she was so allied with Jose. Once they suspected that Jose was going to kill them, I think they realized that their parents were a team mm -hmm. and that since Kitty knew that she was on that meant that she was on Jose's side. I don't know, that's sort of how I view like how their relationship sort of impacted what led up to them being killed by their own children. Okay, thanks for listening guys and uh, next time we'll be delving into Kitty's abuse of her children in general.